Hey guys, uh, welcome to Ethernet Blueprint where we talk about building home networks into your new construction homes. The product we like to um, show off is Ubiquity. We think it's a very great product for any home network and today is one of those examples where we're going to show off some of its capabilities. The purpose of today's video is to kind of show you what a dual WAN failover looks like with their um, UDM Pro router, which is this device right here. So the UDM Pro is a really, really powerful and great device. Um, it works really well. And basically, this device does a lot of different things. It's, it's your router, it's your firewall. You can actually put a hard drive in here. It can be your camera DV, NVR for um, IP cameras from Ubiquity. It has an eight port switch on it. Um, none of the ports are PoE, just so you know, in the UDM. Um, there is a UDM Pro SE special edition version that does have a couple um, PoE ports. I don't believe they're PoE plus. I think they're just regular PoE, but they do have a couple PoE. Um, it's got some 10 gig SFP ports that you can use. But one of the really cool things that you can do is you can actually hook up two internet providers at the same time and it will fail over between the two devices. Now, little segue here, it's on the SE version of this, you can actually establish and set up load balancing. There's some additional configuration that you can do to where if you have two internet providers hooked up at the same time, you can actually load balance between them and the router will take care of that for you. We are told that is actually coming in a future upgrade of the UDM Pro, but as of right now, it the only thing that works in here is failover. There's no way to establish any load balancing. The screens where you would configure that on the interface aren't even there. So basically what, what we can do is, is we can identify which ports are our WAN ports. So this port nine right here is actually plugged into my home network rack and it is gonna be running off Verizon 5G home internet. Um, now, normally by default, this SFP up here, port, port 10, is our backup WAN, but the configuration, which I'll show you here in a second, does allow you to set port eight, one of your regular copper ports. If you don't have a copper port SFP, which they do make copper up to 10 gig port SFPs for these, uh, but if you don't have one of those, you can actually establish port eight as your backup. So you can see I have a cable in port eight. It is hot and that's actually run off of my T-Mobile 5G internet here. So we have Verizon for our primary and T-Mobile for our backup. Now there's two types of failovers that I wanna simulate for you guys today. The first kind is where this actually loses link activity. Maybe there's a power failure or something gets unplugged but basically this port goes down and it goes down instantly. The switch and the router know that it's down instantly and it will fail over much, much quicker because it realizes the port is down, but the link has to go out, okay? Um, the second type of failover I'm gonna demonstrate actually simulates more of what I would call a common outage. And that would be maybe Verizon is having some issues up the line or my router itself is having some issues, but the link stays active. This link keeps blinking and talking, but it can't get to the internet. So the router itself typically takes about 30 seconds to fail over. It has to establish there's an outage. The outage has to be longer than 30 seconds, and then it will fail over to its backup link, which, you know, 30 seconds is still feels like an eternity when you're down, but that's considerably better than being down for a day or even hours. Um, so I'm going to simulate both of those kind of outages for you today as part of this. So I just kind of wanted to paint you the picture about how we're set up today. So next, let's go take a look at the interface and I'll show you what this looks like and how to, how to set this up in your UDM. And then we'll go ahead and simulate some outages with some ping tests. Okay. Okay, guys. So the first thing I wanted to show you is actually where to set this up in your UDM um, interface. So we are on the network uh, controller for the UDM Pro and you can see this is just the main dashboard that shows us um, the main screen here. Now according to this you can see our WAN IP addresses here. We have two of them listed. One is from Verizon right here, Verizon 5G home internet and that's a 10 dot network from my private um, IP scheme. 
And then we have WAN2, which is a 192.168.12 address, and that is coming from T-Mobile. So if I come over here to it, you can see T-Mobile is our backup. Now, let's go to where we would set this. So it's very easy to set up. You go over here to settings, and then you're gonna go to internet, and then you'll see the internet setting right here. Now, as I discussed earlier, there are no additional settings in here currently for load balancing, but I am told it's gonna to be coming in a future release. Um, Ubiquity has already expressed that this is what they're planning on doing. They just released it in the UDM Pro SE first. So hopefully that means they're working out the bugs there and then they'll go ahead and release it on their regular UDM Pro, which is what we're using here today. Now by default, I have both of them plugged in. You can see I got two green link lights. However, by default, port 10 is set as the backup WAN port. So if I drop this down, typically it is set to port 10 as our backup link and port eight is just an option. So it's one of those things, now you can see right here where we've changed it, this is what it looks like by default. So you see the little globe up there and it says secondary as our backup internet, even though we have port eight hot. So if you don't plan on using SFP plus uh, modules in here and would like to just reuse a regular patch cable, then you'll need to change this to port eight. So we'll go ahead and do that, hit enable. It'll go ahead and change it. And now we have assigned port eight as our backup WAN interface for our device. Everything is reflected up here and we are ready to go. That's it. It's as simple as setup. There's no tweaks, no setups. You just got to make sure you have the right port identified. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and switch back over here to the main dashboard. We're going to pull up a ping or a command prompt, pinggoogle.com, whoop, minus T. All right, so there are two different kinds of failovers I'm going to simulate for you guys today. The first one that we're going to do is where the link actually goes down. So this would be more caused by, say, a power issue or something like that. Um, but the link will actually go down. And because the link goes down, the box is able to determine that that port is down much quicker and the failover happens much quicker. Typically, we only drop one ping. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so you can see the ping we dropped right there. And you can also see that we are running off of WAN 2. WAN 1 has completely disappeared because it is showing as down. So we are running off of T-Mobile right now and we only dropped one ping to get there. So from an outage standpoint, where if you lose power or something, maybe you have two different UPSs, one into one and one into your other ISP, and maybe you have a UPS failure or something, if that link goes down, it'll fail over almost instantly. So let's go ahead and fail back. Okay, the fail back process is usually pretty quick. Um, once it reestablishes that link and comes up, um, sometimes we drop a ping, sometimes we actually don't even drop a ping, which is kind of nice. So you can see our WAN IP port nine came back up. We did drop a ping very briefly. And you can see that we're back to normal very, very quickly. Um, so not a bad process. So the next outage I wanna simulate is one where the outage happens further down the line. This would be you have maybe Cox Fiber Internet and Cox is having a bad day and has an outage. The link light on our router, port nine, will actually never go down, but it's access to the internet will. And so the box will have to establish that it's truly down. So let's go ahead and simulate that. So basically the way I'm simulating this is I'm actually unplugging my trunk port on my switch that goes to the rest of my network, um, which would basically simulate an outage further down the line. The link, my switch still has power. The, it's still talking to my UDM Pro. It's still linked together, but it can't get to the internet. Um, and so there you can actually see it established that the primary internet was down. If you have alerting, um, set up on your box, it'll actually tell you, hey, there's been an issue, we're failing over, and it'll tell you that, and then when it fails back, it'll actually tell you we failed back. 
So you can see we dropped, uh, what is that, seven, eight pings there. Um, so, you know, you're around that 35 second mark, give or take, um, for an outage, but we did come back up and we are showing as running, uh, even though it's still showing us our IP information here, we did establish a failover. It does say the primary internet service is down and that means we're running off of T-Mobile. Okay, so we'll put our pings back up there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug this back in. We'll simulate coming back online. Again, sometimes we drop a ping, sometimes we don't, but the failover or recovery um, process is usually much quicker. You know, and as this is failing back over, one of the things I like to point out here is this really is a good thing for like these Verizon 5G home internets or T-Mobile 5G internets. You can, because they're actually offering them right now for like 25 or 30 bucks, if you qualify and your address qualifies, makes it a really nice backup solution. I mean, it makes it a nice primary solution too. Don't get me wrong. I use the Verizon 5G home internet $25 plan for my home internet and I have very few problems, actually none. I haven't had any problems since I've run it. It works really, really well. Um, but if you were the type of person who's like, no, I want fiber, I have fiber to my house, I want to utilize it, it's a nice backup link. You know, those potentially any physical hard line that's run to your house, whether it's going through your neighbors or going up a hub into a, plugged into a hub down the street, um, you know, you're susceptible to someone getting in that box and something getting cut or unplugged or tweaked or bumped. And so it basically, even though they're trying to establish new internet service for your neighbor, they take you down in the process. So this is a really nice insurance policy and really actually a pretty affordable way of doing it. So, all right, that concludes our test, guys. I just want to show you what this looks like, how to set it up in your UDM Pro. We're very big fans of Ubiquiti products. I like the UDM Pro almost 100%. I like, there are a couple things I don't like about it, but and we'll, we'll actually do a dedicated video to down the road to the things I do not care for on the UDM Pro, but for the most part, it's all positive. I really, really do like the device. I love the fact you can do um, dual WAN, which is cool. Um, I will point out too, that if you have a USG, the USG can also do dual WAN. And I believe, uh, at least in the controller version I'm running, you can actually establish it to um, do load balancing if you want to. Um, so it's it's got a little bit different features because it's not running off the UDM version. Um, it's running off a different version, but it's um, it's pretty nice too. So if you have a USG or a USG Pro, you can actually do this in there well as well. I don't know about the Edge router line. I think you can, but don't quote me on that. I can't remember if you can. I've only I used to work in those a while back. And I can't remember if you can do dual WAN, so I apologize. I just don't work in that equipment enough. So this concludes the video, guys. If you like what we do, please subscribe. Please give us um, a follow. We'd love to have you back for future videos. Um, our big thing here is helping people with their new construction homes and establishing a nice ubiquity network in here. So we wanna show off what it can do from time to time because we feel it's a really great solution, especially for someone building in their network and having the opportunity to run lines where they want to. If you want help with that, we have some things out in our bio that you can look at. I got a free checklist that you can download that basically you know, uh, offers some suggestions as to where to put networks, include network drops in your home. Um, and then we also have more of an end-to-end -end guide, which is $97, but, and it will show you, it'll talk about future proofing, what kind of cables to use, how to plan your Wi-Fi really easily in your house and actually do uh, use a free heat mapping software, um, like I said, types of cabling, um, little tips and tricks that you can do um, during the building process to help future-proof your home, um, how to, where to put a, your network head in in your home, how to handle your DMARC. It really just covers it end to end and it's a really great starting point for anybody building a home and wanting some help with their Ethernet needs. So I, I um, encourage you guys to check that out. Like I said, $97. Uh, it's a great guide. I put a lot of uh, sweat equity into it and I really like it. So hopefully you'll find some help with that if you were looking to do a project uh, on your own. So with that, I will uh, go ahead and conclude the video. Thank you for your time and we'll see you in a future video. Thank you.